Okay, friends, uh, Alex Jones here with part two, breaking down the fact that the system is panicking. They know that you're aware of the fact they're a pack of liars. Congress has a 9% approval rating. It's the same thing with the parliament in England. Same thing going on in the continent of Europe. Same thing in Eastern Europe, Asia, the Middle East. The establishment knows that there's a global awakening that President Brzezinski told the Council on Foreign Relations about last year. For the first time in history, Humanity is awake and staring at the puppet masters, not their puppets, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, Gordon Brown, Herman Von Rumpy, Barroso, Merkel, the rest of it. It's game on. And so they're going to cognitively infiltrate. They're going to have people infiltrate. Anyone who questions the received false dogma that the earth is flat, uh, like they tried to lock up Copernicus or tried to lock up Galileo for saying that the earth was the center of the universe. They're going to try to call us heretics. They're going to have people that march in and claim, I was a truther, but now I'm not. And they're going to do this over and over again because they're desperate, because their favorite tool of staging terror attacks and posing as saviors as a pretext to enslave the sheep isn't working anymore. You know, it was the French philosopher Victor Hugo that said, no army can stop an idea whose time has come. And that has certainly, certainly now happened. If you'll just search the term, the smoking guns of 9-11, you'll see the 10 smoking guns, the 20 smoking guns, the 50 smoking guns at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. But you'll see the 200 smoking guns, the 300 smoking guns, the 500 smoking gun articles that others have put together. And I've gone over, I've spent months sometimes, every waking hour other than radio, studying every one of those smoking guns, upwards of 500. Maybe 20 or 30 were false trails, but the vast majority, 90 plus percent, were so hardcore, so unbelievable. And I got past my personal fear. I talked to my wife, and I said, humanity has no future if we don't do this, even though individually we may be politically destroyed or intellectually destroyed or physically destroyed, we have to do this. And she said, no, it's the right thing to do. She was my girlfriend at the time. They staged 9-11. I got up at you know, 6 in the morning. The attacks happened. I broadcast all day on the Genesis Network as a fill-in host and reporter on other shows. Did my own three-hour show. Broadcast all the way up to midnight that night. But I took that one-hour break to drive to Mr. Gaddy's Pizza at 4 o'clock, which was 5 o'clock Eastern, to order a uh, cheese, sausage, pepperoni, black olives. And I was in the car going through channels, and they were saying they're going to have a controlled demolition of Building 7. I heard that. I heard it on NPR and CBS. And I'll never forget talking about that for years, and finally the Internet got prolific enough that folks dug up all those clips. And they're all on the web now. And I've been interviewed by Nightline, MSNBC, CNN, Fox, you name it, I've been interviewed by it. Hundreds and hundreds of TV interviews, Japanese, Russian, Iranian, Chinese TV, Venezuelan TV, I've, I've been on it all. And I've never physically, physically had an urge to get up out of my seat while I was being interviewed in person and punch somebody in the nose. But I have good instincts. You know, I told Paul Watson about a year ago, I said, stay away from this particular activist. He's got psychopath, sociopath eyes because they, they enjoy, they see you as prey. They think it's a big joke how they manipulate you. And, I, and I've learned to recognize them throughout life because I'm the opposite of these people. I've got all the rage, all the power and more, but I've got love that's so much larger. So I can basically go into the other side. I can see them. And uh, Watson was like, I, Alex, you're always right in the past, but come on. Then he wanted to go to Bilderberg with this person, and I said, no way. I said, uh, they're an operative. They're going to turn against 9-11 truth and everything else. And Watson called me, and he said, I can't believe you're right again. How, how the hell do you know this stuff? Because I don't just say it about everybody, and then I'm right sometimes. I'm always with precision. It's, it, it's a gut instinct. Over the years, I have just haven't followed my instincts. Now I do because they're never wrong. Because the subconscious mind is hundreds and hundreds of times more powerful than the conscious mind. And so when the computer comes up with an answer, you know, police detectives call it the nose. It's not the nose, it's the mind. I follow it. But this is a victory. We should be glad 
that they're running all these hoaxes. And but, but back to what I was saying, the BBC reporter was here, and, and and when I brought up the passports, and I said, well, the passports, you know, they fell magically out of the fireball and got found that day. Both of those are impossible. I said, you really believe that? And he giggled and smiled at me with his black teeth. And I realized I was like looking at a mercenary, an operative. This was all a big joke to them. And I just said, you know what? I got to take care of some other stuff. I'm not doing the rest of this interview. Because it, it was all just a joke. It was a construct. And I'm happy to have my hands tied in a debate. But just to be part of something fake, I wasn't going to do it. You can say what you want about me, but I'm real. I worry every day that I will betray liberty and freedom just by my own human weakness, not consciously. I can't imagine people that just serve corrupt power and worship dark evil for no reason. My full will is set against corruption. But I thought I'd show you just a few things because some people say it wasn't all over the news that they found not one but two passports. Again, through the fireball, surviving, go to the ground, and in all this battle and they're found. But, but, but here's a couple clips uh, right here for you right now. Here we go. There is uh, Dan Rather. Here it is. CBS's Byron Pitts is there with new pictures that show anew the incredible damage in sickening clarity. Byron? Well, Dan, not far from here, a passerby found the passport of one of the hijackers. Evidence this disaster scene is also a crime scene. Above the okay, they go on. Here's another one. This, this guy at CNN can't even buy it. He says, if you believe it. Here it is. It's loading. Another development on Saturday. New York officials revealed at a news conference here in the city that a hijacker's passport was found blocks from the World Trade Center crash site, if you can believe that. No other <laughs> details were given, but the discovery prompted the FBI and police Trade Center crash site, if you can believe that. Trade Center crash site, if you can believe that. Trade Center crash site, if you can believe that. No other details. Do you believe that, folks? Do you believe 2 plus 2 equals whatever they say? Not me. I don't believe that. Infowars.com. The resistance will never stop. Human liberty will never stop. We're going to defeat these parasites. They don't deserve the earth. They don't deserve to control human destiny. I don't believe any of it. They've been proven liars over and over again. They call you a conspiracy theorist if you question liars.